You're tuned in to The Andrew Lawton Show. We have a lot happening this week. Ontarians go to the polls for the provincial election on Thursday. Of course, advance polls were uh, already taking place, so a lot of Ontarians have already voted. But still, I, I think it's important to talk about the themes that are coming out in this as Doug Ford and the Progressive Conservative Party seeks re-election. New Blue leader Jim Carajalios joins me back on the program here. Uh, Jim, we talked uh, a little while ago, but I, I wanted to drill in to the policy aspect here. Uh, tell me about the New Blue print what is this well thanks for remembering the name of it andrew and uh, we're really happy with the new blueprint it's the uh, most important topics going into this election for the new blue party and our candidates uh presented in six bullets in addition to the covid uh related legislation that we've been pushing back on since belinda voted against doug ford's lockdown bill bill 195 and we're really really proud of it i'm happy to go over some of the key highlights for you but of course We've been talking since last summer um, about um, banning the use of vaccine passports, not just making them optional in the public or private sector, but banning them. We were, I was there, uh, I saw you in Ottawa at the trucker convoy talking about restitution for uh, some of those truckers who had their businesses, 39 of them had their businesses shut down without due process and for some of the churches who had their doors shut and their keys taken from them and couldn't access their facility. But we knew that the PCs were going to run away from their COVID record and make it sound like they had nothing to do with it or wasn't their fault in the last two years. And so we've been very diligent to make sure that we're talking about fiscal, social and democratic issues. We're the only party out there talking about scrapping the per vote subsidy for the uh, establishment political parties that Doug Ford brought back and increased by 40 percent over 100 million dollars in 10 years has gone to the PCs, the Liberals and the NDP. We're talking about canceling the Toronto Star's online gambling license. And we need one provincial party that fights for free press. And we're talking about bringing down electricity rates by getting rid of the wind turbines. And I'm happy to get into that some more with you because it's a complicated file. And of course, we all remember Belinda was the only MPP to vote against critical race theory in Bill 67. And we um, uh, launched that stopwoke.ca petition that, petition that Belinda read on the last day of the legislature. And uh, in our platform, the new blueprint is getting rid of critical race theory in our schools and offering tax credits for our, those parents who've chosen alternatives in education. Let me go back to what you said at the beginning there, Jim, which is preventing the government from being able to do some of the horrific things they've done in the name of, of public health and COVID with vaccine passports and mandates and all of that. I mean, the federal government has a constitution, which theoretically, and I mean, there, there's a big debate we could have about the efficacy of the courts here, but theoretically constrains future government's actions. If you were to get in and you were to pass this, what's to stop a government from basically doing what the Doug Ford government did, which is rip ripping up the law and ripping up all of this and saying we're, we're doing it anyway. I mean, a government that can impose a restriction on itself could also remove that restriction when it was expedient to do so, couldn't it? And it's kind of a similar qu question on a variety of policies, even in Doug Ford's industrial carbon tax that we're talking about. That's part of the new blueprint. But I've always said that these are not just legal questions. These are political questions. And I remember, Andrew, when I was uh, in law school in Ottawa, I hope the uh, uh, viewers forgive me for going to law school. Belinda did when she met me. But um, I remember some of the judges that we had met admitted that when they make some of these charter decisions or constitutional decisions, they do look at public sentiment and they do look at what uh, the debates are in the legislature. So it's not just a legal answer and uh, lawsuits uh, are necessary in advocacy, just as our protests and rallies and petitions. But the other piece is having a political party fighting to change legislation and pushing back when legislation is changed in the future. So we saw the government throw away uh, a lot of the um, what we thought were constitutionally protected rights and freedoms. And we saw Doug Ford take emergency powers that we uh, traditionally thought were only for a period of time of uh, under a month and expand it to two years. And you're right, a future government can uh, uh, do that under the current uh, political climate that we have here. But we need a political party to say it's not enough to just, you know, walk away and say vaccine passports are going to be optional now. We need government created this problem. We need the pushback to be government is going to solve this problem. And it starts with advocacy from the new blue party saying we're going to ban uh, vaccine passports, public or private sector. 
And I think that's an important step in ensuring that future governments know not to try uh, this again. The pessimism that I had through a, a lot of the pandemic came from the fact that it seemed like a lot of Ontarians welcomed restrictions. A lot of Ontarians welcomed vaccine passports. I mean, how do you square what you're proposing with what I fear was a, at times in the pandemic a, a democratic will for some of these things? Well, I think in the early going, um, there was a lot of fear that came over. And um, even when Belinda voted against Bill 195, we saw a lot of um, politicians uh, vote in favor of it, who later cheating. And so, uh, sure, the public was afraid. And part of the problem, I think, is that the government was, I, I've said this publicly, it's nefarious that St. Joe's and Hamilton had early treatment for COVID and it wasn't readily being promoted and expanded, uh, whether it's an, any uh, monoclonal antibodies or other early treatments, it wasn't expanded across Ontario. So the public's fear was there's no treatment for this. Nothing can be done. And uh, that gave the government some early leeway. But if you look now, the PCs have been running away from their record and they're scaring the public about these types of mandates and lockdowns, saying that the NDP might do exactly what Doug Ford did a few times. So I think it's important with advocacy uh, the public responds and the public uh, mood may shift depending on more information that comes out. And so maybe in the beginning there was skepticism, but I think largely the more people find out about uh, treatments for COVID and the studies that have come out and in discussion that the lockdowns did nothing to curb the spread. And there was no such thing as COVID zero. And the same with the vaccine passports. Uh, I think the public comes around. And I would also remind people on this that the government and their public health advisors have not ruled uh, ruled out the return of these things. I mean, it's all well and good during an election to see everyone mask free, vaccine passport free. But uh, Kieran Moore has gotten up there and said, you know, once winter comes around, who knows what's going to happen? And we've got a that's why the new blue party is just getting started on June 2nd. It's no conclusion. We need a political party in every corner of this province, Andrew that when the establishment parties, and we know, it's not even if, we know that they're not going to stick to their commitments, and especially the Ford PCs, we're going to be there, the New Blue Party outside the legislature, hopefully inside the legislature, to keep advocating and keep pushing. And one of the things that COVID brought up in the last two years, you, you'll, you'll know this, Andrew, that the power that some of the local bureaucrats have in the name of public health. So you can have yeah. specific regions just declaring without any due process, without any debate in the legislature, they're going to shut down businesses. And part of the new blueprint is doing a comprehensive review of what those um, um, legal powers are of local bureaucrats in the name of public health. They have no idea what it's like to operate a church or worship or uh, run a small business. They shouldn't have that power in many instances to shut down small businesses and tell people how many people they can have over for Christmas and Thanksgiving. Yeah, I mean, there was a time not that long ago, I guess two years and a bit, where the public health officer was the one telling you about getting your malaria shot before you go to Africa, teaching people about the importance of safe sex and, uh, you know, making sure that there were uh, drug overdose responses available. I mean, these things that most people associate with public health. The amount of power that we've learned was always there, but has only more recently been deployed is, is shocking to people. And, and I guess the, the question is, how big of an overhaul do we we need to rein that in we need a comprehensive overview of of the laws and the regulations on the books for the local bureaucrats in addition to repealing all of the laws that uh, doug ford put in under the guise of uh, you know lockdown mandate related legislation including bill 100 um, that he put in near the end of the legislative sitting that allows him to go after people without due process and shut down businesses it's got to be a comprehensive overview of the last two years of COVID lockdown uh, related legislation and mandate related legislation and proactive legislation because of the problem the PCs have created in many instances where Doug Ford is now saying it's an option for people or facility operators whether they want to use the COVID vaccine passport. But a few months ago when Belinda was standing in the legislature challenging them on it, whether it was a liberal private members bill or or otherwise, the PCs were advocating for it publicly and in the legislature, telling uh, uh, facility operators to uh, impose COVID vaccine passports and the nurses that were terminated from their jobs. It's only increased the backlog of procedures. The new blueprint calls for rehiring those nurses. So there's a lot of work to do, but it starts with ensuring that 
The discussion continues and the advocacy in the right direction continues. And that's what the New Blue Party of Ontario was started for two years ago. And we're just getting started on June 2nd. You've gone in the uh, new blueprint back to basics on, I think, conservative fiscal policy here, a, a reduction in the HST from 13% to 10%. So that's a, a pretty significant reduction in, in the provincial portion of that. I, I'm not even going to pretend that I'm opposed to that. I, I think that's wonderful. I'd say bring it on. How would you pay for it, though? Uh, the payment's got to be through economic growth. I mean, conservatives in the past, Andrew, would say, we don't have a spending problem, we have a revenue problem. Well, under 20 years of liberal and PC governments, we have a spending problem and we have a revenue problem because the economy is growing at over 1%. And we all know that the more you, you increase taxation, the economy is not going to pick up. And we saw it with Doug Ford put in an industrial carbon tax. That's part of the same tax relief we're promising in the new blueprint. And every time you add one of these taxes, you're just slowing down the economy. Our new blueprint has the best plan to get the economy going again. It starts with reducing electricity rates by taking down and decommissioning those wind turbines and reducing the HST will also have an economic impact. And that's how we're going to pay for um, tax relief and for uh, social services going forward. And social services are in trouble because if we keep growing this economy at a fraction of what our spending increases, um, we're going to have a big problem. But I'll say one more thing, Andrew. I said this to someone who interviewed me the other day from a, a, a publication. When it's time for the PCs or the Liberals to spend money, like Doug Ford just did, he spent more money in the last four years than any government. He's run greater deficits, excluding COVID spending, than any government in the history of Ontario. It's amazing that the establishment press that never says, how are you going to pay for that? It's just like it's a bottomless pit of money when it comes to spending, when it comes to six point nine billion dollars to try to keep hydro rates down. But when it comes to tax relief, the left is all over the place and the establishment media are screaming, you can't pay for it. Well, the best way to to uh, afford tax relief is by doing a tax relief and getting the economy going. Are there any big significant expenditures that you see? I mean, obviously you're not in there and, and you don't have access to the full books in the sense that you would if you were the, the premier, but are there things going into it that you know you could you could cut that are big ticket items or that you would at least look at for cuts? Well, one of the ways uh, we um, reduce spending is through the alternative schooling tax credit and other uh, wasteful spending like the $100 million a year that Doug Ford's been doing um, uh, for the political parties over the last 10 years. He didn't do the $100 million, but the establishment party set it in, in motion. But the other big spending, $6.9 billion a year of taxpayer money being used to artificially deflate hydro rates when the solution is to take down the wind turbines. And we just saw him for two months um, make promises of the in, in the billions, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of um, uh, green energy uh, electric vehicle subsidies, and, and I hate using the term green energy because it's not. It's not green energy. Um, so right there with his commitments that he's promised, uh, totally opposed to the electric vehicle subsidies, corporate welfare going to create these industries that are entirely going to be dependent on government funding. And the minute the government can't afford to fund them anymore, those industries will collapse. So there's a lot of wasteful spending that the Ford PCs have continued in continuing the McGinty win legacy and trying to create a provincial paradigm here in Ontario of whatever Justin Trudeau wants federally. Things like accountability are not or should not be left-right issues. Uh, the COVID handling, I've seen a lot of criticism towards uh, what Doug Ford's done here from the left and from the right, and, and I think increasingly from people that aren't even political or aren't even on the political spectrum. So let me ask how, how you envision your party fitting into the political landscape here. Are you trying to be an alternative for conservative voters, or do you actually see something in here that's going to attract votes from uh, former liberal voters, NDP voters, green voters, and, and non-voters? Uh, one of the um, biggest um, components of our supporters are people who have stopped voting for a long time, uh, we get it uh, in Kitchener, Conestoga, and Cambridge, and across Ontario. People who said, who have said, they gave up on the establishment parties because they're all the same. And whether it's we are talking about issues that um, voters previously would have said, you know, I consider that a right of center issue, or they thought that that was not a right of center issue, and they're coming around and 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 realizing that's actually a good solution or whether we're talking about the things that, uh, on accountability and democratic reform and not wasting money that a lot of voters used to think 
was common amongst all the parties. For example, the idea that you're subsidizing a political party for their operations, I don't think there's a voter out there on the left or the right that thinks that's a good idea, or very few at least. The idea that you know the PCs would not allow Belinda's private members bill to pass in 2019, and they parked it at a committee. Oh, I think we, uh, I think you froze there. Do we still have Jim? Which was to, for the first time. Yeah, sorry, we got you back now. We're uh, carry on there. So uh, in Ontario's history, there's never been a law against voter fraud in internal party elections. And Belinda proposed that private members bill and she got unanimous support from all the parties in the legislature because the Greens, the Liberals, the NDP, they all know that their voters wouldn't be in favor of voter fraud. But the Doug Ford PCs, just parked at a committee, never allowed that private member's bill to become law. I mean, what kind of party, Andrew, wouldn't pass into law a bill against voter fraud in internal party elections? And a lot of voters in Ontario, whether it's Cambridge or otherwise, they, ha they, they had no idea that there are no laws on the books against voter fraud taking place in a leadership, in a nomination, at a party convention. And of course, we the, the other promise we've made is to scrap the Toronto Star's online gambling license. And Andrew, you're you're one of the best read on this stuff. You'll see a lot of left-leaning commentators writing articles on this stuff saying this is a terrible idea to mix online gambling revenues with print media is a terrible idea. And uh, there's other local issues that we've been fighting for, like Belinda's been standing up against a drug injection site in Cambridge. And uh, voters that traditionally may have voted on the left or the right or never voted um, are, are, are coming around and saying, I agree with that. So we are talking about the things that the establishment parties and, other, and others in the political process are not talking about. And that's where we've been building our support for the last two years. And even before that, since we started, I started the Axe of Carbon Tax campaign. I know about uh, 15 years ago, Ontarians voted in a referendum on electoral reform, on, on introducing mixed member proportional representation, which would have allowed uh, for some proportional representation in the legislature, which uh, would have allowed for newer parties and upstart parties to have a bit more of a direct path in. Is that something you'd support or you have a, a position on as leader of New Blue, electoral reform? It's not in the new blueprint. It's something that we're always looking at ways to strengthen our democracy. But in the immediate future, we're fighting for um, a cleanup of the internal party uh, process. So uh, I think that's the immediate thing that needs fixing. And tinkering with the general election system is kind of, you know, jumping a few steps ahead. Uh, federally, you remember in 2005, Stephen Harper brought forward the Accountability Act. And he made a, a clear line between lobbyists getting involved in internal party politics. Provincially, we've seen those same guys like Doug Ford's campaign manager taking advantage of the fact that in Ontario, there are not as strong laws against that. And we've seen lobbyists or reported lobbyists on the PC side jumping on caucus calls and telling caucus how they should be voting. And the entire internal party system in Ontario politics has is totally broken not just damaged a bit where it's entirely driven by the leader and whoever the gang in the back is so the focus has to be on cleaning up the internal party system first i think before we start tinkering with how the general election model works now i mean just one last question jim if that happened is a party like the new blue needed if if the major parties or the established parties are are subject to the rules that you've proposed well, that's just one element of it. But the New Blue Party of Ontario, I worked really hard and Belinda worked really hard. And there were thousands of others that really worked very, very hard for many years to influence the Ontario PC Party. Work from the inside is what they said to push for the solutions that the establishment parties don't want to talk about. And June 2nd is just a starting point for us. We're not going away. We've balanced the narrative. We've changed the course and we've challenged the left for the last few years and we're going to continue to do that jim carajalios leader of the new blue party i know it's a big week with the election coming up thursday so thanks very much for joining me again thanks andrew thanks for listening to the andrew lawton show support the program by donating to true north at www.tnc.news